So we'll do a simple animation with Mancandy, concentrating on Mancandy's facial controls. And to keep things as quick as possible, let's try to do something that has very few key poses. Um, and the simplest thing I could think of is doing a take. Now a take is when the character reacts to something surprising um, or interesting, and it causes the character to go through some basic poses. So you have the initial pose, this neutral pose that the character is standing. So we call it the neutral pose. And then, uh, of course, uh, at the peak of the take, there's an accent where the character is staring with, with eyes open and body extended, just you know, totally astounded by what is seen. And finally, there's a um, neutral, uh, relaxed pose that the character goes back into. And between the first neutral pose and the uh, accent, there's going to be an anticipation pose where the character sort of scrunches up um, at what it's seen. And so you have those four pa poses um, that make up the animation. And um, so we'll so that's uh, the simplest thing I could think of. And um, we'll try to start a very methodical way of animating Man Candy going through those poses. And because it's a take, it's really going to exercise Man Candy's facial controls. And we'll focus on the new controls on layer 10 because they really have uh, more dynamic possibilities than the old ones on layer 9. So, first of all, we have our file with Man Candy linked in, a basic lighting setup that's included on DVD. And uh, it's called nmbase.blend. And you can see that Mancandy is linked to a library file, as we showed. And what we'll do is uh, we'll look at him from the camera perspective, which is already set up to kind of have him looking to camera left and seeing something there. And uh, let's start first start creating his first neutral pose. And um, even though his legs are out of view, I'll uh, I'll do some posing work on those too. And before we start, we'll split the view here and have an action editor open so we can actually work on our animation and we have a reasonable range I will hit the record uh, button here on the timeline to automatically insert keyframes so we don't have to worry too much about what get key what gets keyed and what doesn't and let's start animating man candy so first of all just to get a nice neutral pose for him that's not as rigid as the um, as the um, as the basic pose. We'll just, uh, uh, as you notice, the keys are automatically happening. We'll just key his feet and just uh, slide them around on the ground a little bit. Maybe shift his weight over to one leg. Cock his hip up. When the cat is weight is on a certain leg that's going to straighten that leg and bend the other. Uh, we can move this one a bit forward like so. Yeah, that's, that's about okay. We really don't have to worry too much about the legs because as I said they're not really going to be seen by the camera. Um, this is purely just a, an exercise in getting something we're comfortable with before we start working. So now we'll look in camera view since we started working on the upper body. And maybe we can have the body a little bit oriented forward, a little bit of a lean, a little bit of a lean of the neck. And well, the, he the next stretch we can leave in a neutral position. Um, Likewise, the bend may be neutral as well. Let's, uh, let's have him looking not so directly at his target. We'll split the difference between his eyes and his head for the looking uh, part, of, part of that. Let's have a look at his arms. They're on layer 3 and layer 6. And we're going to be doing FK animation of the arms. First of all, let's get his shoulders sort of level. And we can just bring his arms down. Like so. And 
maybe swing them like that so he's kind of holding his hands in front of them a, a little bit you don't have to really see them in this pose but just so long as they're there notice I'm using the manipulator mostly for rotations and I'm in normal mode for the manipulators so that I'm along the bones axes so I'm creating very kind of repeatable poses here and I can I can use the I can grab the the hands and use the target list um, IK constraint just for posing him and just have him kind of droop here let's look at the fingers fingers are kind of rigid right now but we can just have them hang down scale them a little bit down a ski for scale, by the way. And same for the thumb, just rotate it, scale it a little bit. And can rotate these down, scale them in, maybe rotate these two a little bit to the side. And I might relax the shoulder even further. Let's look at the facial bones. So the most important thing is to uh, think about where our character is looking. So maybe he's looking over there. Maybe his mouth is slightly open. can droop his look a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can also use the these manipulators here for translocation as well. These are fun. You can actually rotate them if you want to get some effects on the lips and so on and so forth. We're not going to do anything that intense with them right now. I'm just going to select them and then I key them and that's just so that we have something there if we wanna I'm not really interested in moving them right now so now I'll keep the location rotation of this so this is just to kind of get something going here maybe I'll have his uh, eyebrow lifted a little bit Hmm. Let's have him slightly thinking. We'll squeeze his brows a little bit together. Maybe, maybe scale this down a little bit. We'll droop his eyelids a bit. We can also move these together. This is kind of a more emotional expression. Let's keep it a little bit heavy lidded for now. Uh, we'll keep these guys location. We're not going to actually move them yet. And just to have them kind of keyed. This scales his uh, pupil. It kind of indicates the size of it too. So let's keep a pupil fairly normal. It probably won't be visible in the render actually, to be frank. And we'll just key this guy's location and rotation here. So we have our neutral pose. And by the way, when you're posing the face, even if this is proxied, you can click on the um, the proxy character, the, uh, the character's group, and you can hit Shift O, and he turns into a um, subsurfed version. So you're able to do that so that you can do the facial poses and kind of see what that looks like on the subsurfed character. So I can give him a little squint. Well, we can you know, or even sneer his nose a little bit here. And you can change the level of the subsurf by hitting control and the number key, but not on the numpad, which I was doing by accident just now, but actually on the top row of numbers on your keyboard. Um, and that way you can turn the subsurf to the lowest level by hitting control one. So it's still a little bit responsive, even though it's in subsurf mode. 
and make it like slightly quizzical here. There we go. That's kind of a little bit of a slack jawed expression. We can go ahead and hit shift over again and put him back in non um, non subserve mode. And we can save this file as a new name. Call it take.blend, for instance. And so that's our first action. And you notice know, the action here. We can call it my take, whatever, my candy take. Um, so we have a first pose. Now, what I'll do is I'll. Uh, uh, when I'm starting the posing, I won't worry too much about about um, about what is going on in in time wise. I'll just worry about getting the uh, first poses down. And so what I'll do instead of going like thinking about when he's going to do this or that, I'll just go ten frames forward and I'll lay out my second pose. And so for the the kind of anticipation part, we have to imagine that he's all scrunched up. Um, and so we can start from big to small. And um, you, by the way, shift space or control up arrow lets you maximize a window in Blender, which is convenient if you're trying to have as much screen real estate as possible and not have to worry about having all the buttons around when you don't need them. And then it's a quick shortcut to get them back. So just so you know. So so in our little anticipation pose, we're going to scrunch him up. So maybe I'll move him, his torso back a little bit and then I'll roll these guys a little bit forward. Scrunch it up a little bit down. Like so let's really scrunch up his neck. And we can even shorten his neck with this guy here. Just pulling it like that, which is a handy little cheat. We'll actually move his face a little bit away and down here. Now maybe, maybe as his as his torso comes down, his arms could sort of come up a little bit. Shift space. So maybe, maybe we can, can put these up. something like that and shouldn't forget about his fingers so we'll do that too shift space oh, I think I changed the pose so go down here make sure I'm in the right position and shift space up and let's get his fingers up uh -huh. So maybe I'll spread these out a bit and roll them. So he's kind of grasping at the air a little bit. Like that. And I can have a fun spread of his fingers on this this hand can so you can see them go. Of course, I mentioned this was a facial take, so or a facial animation concentration. So let's go to his layer 10 face controls. Shift, uh, sorry, shift space, hit up arrow instead of space there. So then, when he's scrunched up, you can imagine that his mouth would be closed. So we move this jaw as much as possible up, and maybe maybe pull his lips out and down a little bit like that use these handy manipulators so we can see where they're going to move them a little bit down 
can move the whole mouth down a bit and then we can take these guys here sort of push them down and we can use that nice rotation trick to kind of give them a little bit more of a scrunched in feeling these can go up a little bit the other, sorry rotate on the uh, x-axis a little bit something like that Yeah, something like this. Like I said, we can hit Shift O here, so we can kind of see how this looks. And his his brows should come down a lot here. It's really closing his eyes. And we scale this in even further because there's a lot of muscular tension going on in this pose. Scrunch his nose up into his eyebrows like so. Definitely we'll want to close his eyes here. Like that. We can decide that he looks a little bit down in this pose too. As he's closing his eyes, let's increase the tension of the eye close by squinting his eyes like that. We can actually even change the attitude of the closed eyes. Pupil doesn't matter so much with the eyes closed. By playing with this. So instead of having him looking like he's sleeping, having him looking like he's really pushing his lower eyelids up. See, that really changes the feel of those closed eyes. Just uh, having those in the kind of up position like that. We can even distort his eyes mesh so like they're just ever so more scrunched here we can really push that in deform the face can really be nasty to his face here a little bit like that get his snarlies up in there too. Can pull these up a little bit. So sort of really accentuate that that expression, and we can even do cool things, like squash his whole head down. And to keep that squash, that volume preservation, we'll pull it out at the same time. And I already got his neck in and so, so that's kind of a and we can make his mesh to get it responsive a bend, hit shift O so you don't have to worry about that. Shift space, then we get back to our normal view. And we can tweak the, the torso and neck a little bit, have the neck swing his head a little bit away from the thing that he saw like so sort of really push this expression and I kind of generally try to get everything keyed on all of these frames so we can cock his um, get his shoulders shrugging a lot too because that kind of makes sense like he would pull his shoulders up in this pose I'll key this even though I don't think I need to do anything to it in this phase and try to get everything keyed in every pose basically and that kind of works so that could be our kind of down pose right here and there's nothing to stop you from thumbnailing these two on pen and paper if that's what helps. I'll key the pupil. The heck, even though I didn't do anything. Notice I hadn't keyed these in this pose. So so there's no keyframes for the mid mouth, nose, cheek, left, right, and sneer. And so I'll just Alt R, Alt G, and Alt scale them and key them here so that I don't inadvertently 
change the expression. That's why I said liking everything in this mode so that you really know that nothing's going to change for each pose. So you can go ahead, you can just say some action too, like that, to check it like that. And just go ahead if you want and have a look at. The only exception is the feet. I'm not going to really animate them between those things. They're going to stay on the ground. We can't really see them. So I'm not going to worry that they have a keyframe on each pose. Well, fingers. Uh, yeah. Fingers here, fine. Fingers here, fine. Uh, that's the arm, sorry. Fingers, fine. So everything's keyed on these two poses. Let's save. So here's our, and we can always start looking at our two poses now.